Awesome. Welcome everyone to our mini online workshop for how to achieve healthy and sustainable weight loss. I'm Coach Summer. I'm the owner of Flow Charlotte. I've got lots of juicy information to share with you guys about uh, training and planning and behavioral change. Um, so it's a really rich and uh, informative mini workshop and you'll receive a recording at the end of it. Um, and then also, actually, let's go to gallery view. This is Coach Elise, who is our studio manager at the Flow Shala. She's the one uh, behind the scenes helping manage our coaches. She works with uh, a lot of our Gold Unlimited members for accountability coaching, which is a new program we're, we're rolling out here. Um, actually, this week, we're super excited about, and we'll share with you too. Um, and Elise will be interjecting in my portion. I'll be teaching on the front, front end about uh, 20 to 30 minutes, just going through our work, worksheet and letting you guys journal and take notes. Um, and then Elise is going to give you guys some information about the 21 day reset project, which is a really great starting point or launching pad for individuals that have yet to train with us. And with that too, uh, for anyone who's currently a member or anyone who's not, uh, you also will get some tips and strategies of our top four um, behavioral change, uh, just behavioral change methods that we that we like to talk about so movement mindset, movement, mindset nutrition nutrition yeah top three top, top three. three there's yeah. another one in there the fourth one's track your heart rate it's not track really your heart rate, your heart rate. there's a lot there's a lot of information we share yeah. we don't want to overwhelm you but we do want you to leave feeling inspired um, and we actually just did our usual intention setting prior to this workshop and i'll share mine and then elise can share hers awesome. and then i'd love for you guys to write down why you're here as well um so my intention for the workshop today is to um meet you guys where you're at. I know there's a lot of folks that have been training here for a long time. There's some completely brand new people as well and everyone in between. And I really hope that you guys glean some information that's appropriate for you uh, and that helps inspire you to make changes in the areas that you can change. And Elise is in here. Nice. Okay. So <laughs> We have a double. We got a mute, double one of you. <laughs> Everyone should just mute their screen. That would be super helpful too. Sweet. My intention for today is just to give you guys the clear and concise information of what it is that we do here at the Flow Shala and, and kind of walk you through the processes that we have in place um, that we train everybody who comes into the Flow Shala. So hopefully that will give you some juicy insights into, you know, different meditation, mindset, journaling habits that um, that might help you throughout your life. Cool. Awesome. Your day today. Love it. And we're going to show you a sneak peek at our new um, Digital Nomad membership option, which everyone who um, signed up for this, whether it's recording or you're here live, there's about 30 or so people that registered. Um, you guys all have access to our Digital Nomad Unlimited membership. And that was actually an accident. It was yeah, supposed to go out. My, my we're, bad. <laughs> so you guys get to keep it for 10 days and check it out. And if you decide to do the 21 day reset, if you're a brand new client, you get to have it for the whole length of your 21 day trial. And then you can keep it if you decide to stay as a member. Um, and most of our members are trying it out anyways for free. So if you're a member, disregard that, you just get it for a month for free. Yep, exactly. Yeah, cool. And we are so stoked to put that out. It's a robust library of like 170 classes from movement to mindset. We've got filmed workshops in there. We've got uh, meditation, like all the meditations that I did over COVID. Um, I offered a free meditation series, so they're all on there. Plus other informative and educational videos on the theory behind Flow Shala. So things like uh, the six degrees of freedom and four day wave. And uh, if that stuff doesn't mean much to you now, don't worry. Um, we're here to learn and we're here to grow and to embody these practices. So I'd love for you guys to write down real quick, why are you here? What drew you here in just one sentence? What do you wanna gain? What do you wanna take away from today's workshop? And while you guys are writing, um, I'm just gonna share a bit about why I find that people do workshops that are uh, titled things like this. So I, I titled the workshop How to Achieve Healthy and Sustainable Weight Loss for a reason, because I know that a lot of women as we age, our metabolism slows down. And, and as we slow down and our metabolism slows down and our stress levels increase, uh, usually the result is holding on to unwanted weight. Now we are absolutely body friendly, a body positive in the body image positive facility. So we do not want you to focus on the weight on, on the scale as the first primary factor for doing training. 
This is going to be a natural byproduct of doing the training with us and being consistent, but it's the little things that we do over the long term that really result in long term change. So go ahead and type in the chat bar uh, your one sentence of why you're here. So if we can just pull up the chat and remember to keep going. And um, that way there can be. And if you are not pinning our speaker view and any other speakers are coming up, just so you know, you can go to the top. Um, you can just double click on our image and it will pin us so that we stay in your, in your view. Thanks. And if you want to see that. the grid of the other uh, people here too, you can choose gallery view up to you. Okay. So why are you here? So as you set your intention for what you want to get uh, from this workshop, um, all of the information I'm, I'm sharing, it's a, it's a broad stroke approach. So it's going to give you um, access to, you know, some of the best research-based methods, the science-based methods to get results quickly so that you can really optimize. But there might be certain things that stand out to you more. Maybe you're somebody that really wants to focus on nutrition. Maybe you're someone that really struggles with time and scheduling. Maybe you're somebody that struggles with mindset. So circle or write down or jot down the things that stand out to you and the things that you want to start um, making change on and taking action on today or tomorrow or in the next 24 hours. I always say take little actions on the things that are easiest, the things you're most excited about first. And what it does is it starts to create momentum in that direction. And by you demonstrating and taking action, um, you'll be demonstrating to your subconscious mind that you can do and that you can make little changes. Thumbs up if that sounds good. Ooh, awesome. Okay, so two people wrote in the chat bar, continue my health journey from Denise to feel better about my body from Marilyn. Dawn says keeping a solid balance of weight and strength as we head into the winter, getting some tools for some more healthy patterns. Awesome. Um, some people shared privately, so I won't read those ones, um, but thank you guys for chatting in your, your goals. Um, and the next thing, as those keep coming in, not really sure what I want to do. Oops, that's a private one. I'm not going to read that one. Um, <clears throat> the ones that are non-private, uh, but a big component of, of moving forward in the stages of change, which I'll talk about in a moment, is creating relationship with others. So bringing your thoughts and desires into relationship with a coach or a team or a community or even the people that are present on this call. And as you start putting pen to paper, your subconscious mind, which drives all of your habits, subconscious mind, um, will start to shift. And as you can start to shift your subconscious belief system, that's when those habits start to become automatic and you start to truly embody them as a lifestyle. So uh, the next question down in our worksheet is, what do you want to change? Go ahead and write down the answer to that. What exactly do you want to change? Do you want to increase your frequency and how many times you're training per week? Do you want to shed a certain amount of unwanted, unwanted weight? And you can be really specific and direct with that if you do have a medical related um, weight loss goal. We do encourage you know, individuals whose doctors have recommended weight loss to improve health factors. Um, but this is definitely like a medical type uh, of decision to, to want to lose that weight. We know that it's not vanity based. Uh, why are you ready now is the next question. And then what stage of change are you in? So um, the, the uh, trans theoretical behavioral uh, changes model identifies that we have pre-contemplation. So those are individuals that are not even thinking about that. And I didn't even put that on your bar form today because I know everyone here is at least in contemplation stage. And Fiona and Colette, if at any point you want to put your video on, we would encourage that so you can see your beautiful faces. Um, no pressure, but I just wanted to mention that to Fiona since she popped in just a bit ago. So let's focus on the three behavioral change buckets that you guys are likely in. So, and I'll have Elise share where she's at and I'll share where I'm at. So there's contemplation, pre-contemplation. You're not even at this workshop. You're not even thinking about making change. You might have members of your family or spouses that are in that uh, pre-contemplation phase. They really don't, they're not looking for options uh, to start potentially making change. Contemplation, likely many of us are here. If you are um, looking at and uh, identifying and evaluating different opportunities and different resources, you might be in uh, the contemplation stage of change. Action, that's when you've decided to take action. So you might be in our 21 day reset project. Hopefully by the end of this, some of you guys are motivated to get some of our high quality virtual coaching and, and work with our community. So that's the action stage is when you're in that first one to uh, three months or even one to six months. And then maintenance stage is when you've been doing consistent, regular uh, behavior of, of exercise, so mindset, movement, nutrition for six months or more. 
So give me a quick show of hands. Who thinks they're in the contemplation uh, phase? Raise your hand if you're in the contemplation phase. Just one, anybody else? Mm -hmm. Denise is in contemplation, cool. And who is in the action stage? They've been consistent with training three to four times a week for the last uh, one to three months. Consistent with three to four times a week. And then who is in the maintenance stage? They've been doing that for six months or longer. Six months of training three to four times a week and um, doing your mindset and nutrition practice as well. I wanna say I'm not there yet. I'm not quite there. Six months, I think I keep taking breaks. Yeah. So I've noticed a big shift in Elise coming to a lot more classes since you started coaching. Mm -hmm. And that's probably been about two months. Yeah. So you would be in the action phase. Yeah. For me, I'm, I'm in, I uh, fluctuate between action and maintenance. I do have regular training routine, uh, but since I coach a lot of classes as well, sometimes that uh, is one of my workouts. So for me to do three to four times a week, I'm moving forward towards that. Yeah. 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 Does that give you guys some perspective on different changes, stages of change? Cool. So if you're in contemplation, and you want to move towards action, absorb all the information, do your best to not get overwhelmed by it and pick two to three actionable steps that you can take in the next 24 hours and then build on that momentum. And the next day, what are two to three things? Like I gave you guys a ton of information here and it's going to feel a little bit overwhelming. And I want to just reiterate that I do not expect all of this to change overnight. This is, um, this is enough content that could, you could last you for a whole three month gold unlimited trial membership if you decided to train with us for three full months. All of these strategies could be implemented over long term. Thumbs up if you're cool with that. Sweet. We got one, we got a couple of thumbs up. Cool. Okay, so um, lifestyle. Lifestyle matters. So a big component of training at the Flow Shala is the little practices that we do every day. Mm -hmm. So I'd love for some of our members to share. I'm gonna call on Dawn. And Karen, who's been a member for a really long time, um, what are some lifestyle practices that you've adopted since training? Say the regular movement piece. What, what things have shifted for you or what have you changed? Can you hear me? It's a, it's a bit choppy. On, um, I think for me, the, the regular, just having access to the regular movement uh, has been amazing. You know, not just to, like once a week, but I can, I can, can easily, much more easily fold movement into my life. So um, it's a lot easier to do like four workouts in a week if, I, if I've got the space and time to do it. And what shifted about your lifestyle when you decided to actually make that commitment? Like how did you, how were you able to go from not training consistently four times a week to you joined right at the start of COVID. It's been about seven months of consistent. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what, what shifted in your lifestyle to allow you to implement that? Hmm. To allow me to influence it. <laughs> I mean, at home, so that, that certainly has enabled it, but I think, um, the, the doing of it has, uh, has definitely affected, you know, just, um, like mobility has gotten rid of pain and the pain is like, like sort of this nagging thing that was dragging me back in ways I probably didn't know. So, um, you know, I think, I think that there's like, there's, there's more space because of the way that I'm stuck at home uh, to be able to commit. But I think um, my goal at the beginning was to reduce stress. And because I could kind of feel the stress of the kind of COVID pandemic, everybody at home coming on. And this actually really reduced it such that, I, that it cleared my mind and was able to, I was able to think more clearly and that had other effects. Yeah. So again, the little lifestyle pieces that we give you around stress reduction, which I'll cover in depth here, are designed to help you have a holistic approach um, to sustaining a, a healthy physique. And healthy physique is not just a number on the scale. It's not just our circumference measurements. It's how we feel every day. So it's having that clear sense of mind and having that um, the feeling of being able to control our stress levels. Uh, Karen? Um, the meditation piece has really been a big lifestyle change for me. Um, you know, when I first get up to start my day with um, 10 or 20 minutes for myself, is it's really helpful to set the intention for the day. Um, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. All right. Elise, do you have any feedback or input on any of that stuff? Anything? Well, she works I mean, with literally all of our clients. We're so. gonna we're gonna go over all that in my section. So I don't wanna I don't wanna take too much of the time. But yeah, we're gonna talk a lot about 
different self-care ways to create new habits, the action trigger um, reward and just different things about meditation. We'll be able to practice a breath or two. So we'll get into this. Stay Stick around. around. All right. Um, so I have lifestyle matters, self-care matters. So what is self-care other than meditation? Self-care can be simple. It can be things like uh, taking a, a candlelit bath once to twice a week with Epsom salt and lavender oil. Super cheap. You can buy that stuff at the co-op. Get yourself a little lavender essential oil. Yeah. When placed at the bottoms of the feet um, can actually increase your parasympathetic nervous system tone. So if you want to get better sleep, put a little lavender cut with uh, fractionated coconut oil or coconut oil at the bottoms of your feet. The little stress reduction tip, you're going to get a deeper and fuller sleep and you can drop it um, in the bathtub as well. Another quick trip, uh, tip for uh, getting into that parasympathetic breathing is to put one drop of lavender on a two squares of tissue, lie down on your back and breathe that in, breathe in and pause. We can all try that together right now. This might be the first big breath of the day that you've taken that's intentional. Let's do it together. Take a big inhale through your nose. Pause, hold the breath, suspend the breath for a moment and then exhale, mouth open. Try that again, big inhale through the nose. Suspend the breath at the top briefly, and then exhale, option to go nose or mouth, making a ha sound at the back of your throat. So imagine doing that type of breath with a little lavender on your bed, giving yourself maybe 100 breaths. I have my son do this. If you have kids at home, you can have your kids if they struggle with stress or they have a lot of uh, excessive energy, give them some tips for breathing as well. I have my son do 100 breaths before bed. Mm. All right, so we're going to fly through the rest of this worksheet because I just looked at the clock and realized I have I'm gonna go for another 15 minutes, here we go. Mm -hmm. So how we do one thing is how we do everything. We truly do become our habits, which is why it's imperative that we capture the little small changes that we can make and we build moment momentum on that. So I'd love for you to take a, a look or take some inventory at your current habits and lifestyle. So even now with me, um, weekdays look like this, meals. So I want you to just write something about meals, one to two words. Um, your current life habits and lifestyles around meals. So once a day, is it three times a day? Is there a meal prep happening? Are we going out to eat? Just what does my weekday meal situation look like in two to three words? Movement practice, <laughs> two to three words. Keep it concise. This is about accountability and just um, create awareness. It's a practice in you putting pen to paper so that you can become accountable and aware of your current situation. And stress reduction tactics. Just write two to three words. What does your stress reduction tactic look like? It could be zilch, it could be nothing. It could be, hey, I'm thinking about going to the float center and thinking about booking a massage and thinking about taking a bubble bath. Write it down. And then weekends. So if, if those are exactly the same, awesome. If there's a slight variation on the weekends, just do a quick check-in for meals, movement practice, and stress reduction. Mm. All right, so here, uh, the next little section, five ways to get toned and strong. So these are just little tips and tricks. I've been a trainer for a real long time. I started my first personal training business after graduate school and I was a corporate wellness consultant. So I take, would take massive populations of 300 to 700 employees and I would create wellness plans for them. And that's pretty much what the Flow Shallot is, is a large scale wellness, comprehensive wellness program that works. So I'm gonna give you some of my tips and tricks so that you can maximize and optimize your training time. Tip number one, write this down if it appeals to you. If you already know this because you're a member, give me a thumbs up or an A-OK. -okay. Train the strength three to four times a week for six plus weeks to make gains. I'll say that again, training strength. So all of our classes on the Flow Shala app, which we all added you to MindBody. So if you were to search uh, for the MindBody app, which I'm gonna recommend that you do and Elise will as well, find Flow Shala, you'll be able to see if a class is either moderate or high intensity where they're labeled strength or hit. So anything that's a moderate high is considered strength. Anything that's considered low intensity will be a recovery or more mobility-based class. We do have mobility-based classes every day. That's a great place for starting. And if you're an individual that hasn't trained in a while, if you're sedentary, we highly recommend, which Elise will go over, starting with strictly low intensity classes at first to build your confidence, to build your body awareness, and to prepare your musculoskeletal system for the work ahead. And that's gonna happen later on, the strength three to four times a week might happen in month two, three. Um, take a, play a long game approach, or take, take a long game approach uh, to your wellness, and then that's gonna be what sticks in the long term. 
So research does show that in order to gain lean muscle, we must create a training adaptation. This is why the frequency of three to four times a week is imperative. Because if we want our muscle to uh, build and to gain lean muscle, we need to expose it to that stimulus um, frequently. So three to four times a week is the sweet spot. That's the baseline. If you'd like to build up from there as you progress, that can happen over you know, four to six months. Um, so this equates, like I said, to three to four days of strength. Um, research also shows that the first six weeks, your nervous system is just adapting to the uh, patterns of using the clubs and using the base. So you might not actually see the, mus the muscle toning happen until after week six to eight, because you're storing that information in your nervous system and you're learning how to develop skill. So things like torque, which uh, Coach Elise and I both work a lot with MACE classes. We're always training our new brand new folks on how to generate torque, which is that external rotation and scapular depression, which allows you to radiate force throughout the whole kinetic chain, and not just in the bicep, not just in the tiny shoulder, but the whole entire lat, glute, and core. So after that six to eight week point of consistent three to four times a week, maybe you start with low intensity and you're inserting a mod, just one mod in there, Usually it's after six to eight weeks that we start to see, you know, the striations in our muscle and our triceps, and you start to see and develop the stronger and more sculpted shoulders and deep inner core musculature and glutes. So every single class is designed to help you train your glutes, your core and your lats functionally so that you can increase range of motion, decrease pain and get really strong really quickly. And also that's why it's so efficient to come to flow shell classes because in conventional lifting back when it was just like amateur bodybuilding and people, you know, did bicep curls and they did squats, they would just be training one muscle group and then they'd let seven days pass before they train that muscle group again. When you cross train with us, we're cross training with yoga, with clubs, you're training your whole musculoskeletal system dynamically and you're training other performance attributes as well. Tip number two, eat more protein. We recommend palm sized portion of protein at every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We also recommend to add a green smoothie as a supplement between either breakfast and lunch. Hmm. This is a great way for people to cut down on excessive carbs and excessive uh, sugar cravings is to add that green smoothie. On your printout, I have the recipe for the smoothie. It's just spinach or power greens, oat milk, a scoop of 20 grams of protein uh, with less than two grams of sugar, ginger, half an apple, half a cucumber. Uh, deer clear like bananas, they got a lot of sugar. So going for an apple and a cucumber is gonna be the best way to have um, more of a protein and green and um, based drink. Tip number three, focus on technique and torque in your workouts. Elise, would you mind grabbing one of that little baby club there? Or mace? So Elise is a pro at teaching people how to generate torque. Let's just show them a guard position. So when she's in the guard position or the order position, go ahead and place the left hand on top of the base. So generally when you first come to a mace class, you're gonna learn how to use the tool. You might start with five, you might start with a wooden dowel. That's totally fine. So she's combining the combination of external rotation with scapular depression and she's resisting the top of the mace. The result, her lat is gonna to start to turn on, her core, and then as you're standing on the ground, you guys can imagine this, or if you're at home and you wanna stand on the ground, you wanna stand up, you can start, if you wanna feel torque, just go ahead and just stand up and start to rip the ground apart on your feet. So go ahead and stand up if you don't know what torque is, you're brand new, if you do, you just wanna watch or try it later, cool. Try it just standing in line at the store. Try it making your feet parallel, ripping the ground apart and finding your deep inner core muscles. Please. Number four, always pair your moderate and high days back your workouts back to back. Lisa's is going to cover this a bit more, um, but when you pair your mod and high days back to back, what it does is it decreases the lactic acid buildup and it increases the adaptation for your musculoskeletal system to make gains quicker. So in old school conventional lifting, people when they were just doing amateur bodybuilding, they would train Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You know, back and buys, chest and tries, you know, legs on Friday, and just kind of alternate. Just randomized and sporadic training gets randomized and sporadic results at best. So when you train on a wave with us, uh, we will teach you how to always start with your modern high days, find the workouts that fit in your schedule, and then increase, in, insert your mobility or your low intensity days around that. And those of you guys that are members, um, does anybody want to share briefly just how that's shifted their practice to? Get those modern high days back to back? Just like one sentence. I can keep cruising um, too. Well, I'm a member, I guess. Um, I've been I've been recently though just doing the low intensity classes, but um, I definitely liked 
doing high intensity back to back just because you get revved up and you get in that state of mind, you know? And so then it doesn't end up like, oh, I've just done one high intensity class the last week and a half or two weeks or something. So, and I feel it just carries that energy throughout the week. And then you're not pushing yourself and going too hard though, either. Thanks so much, Jackie, for sharing. And you're on month one and you're gold unlimited, right? You're just almost through your first month. Or no, this is Jackie Lynch. Yep. Yep. Okay. So you've been training for quite a while then. Sorry, I didn't see who it was there. Oh, we got another person popping in. Awesome. All right. Number five, practice 10 minutes of daily stress reduction. Um, so meditation and breath work. This is important. So as we age and our metabolism slows down, stress, um, when are, we have a chronic low grade, grade stress all the time, meaning we don't have any uh, stress reduction tactics like breath work to get us into parasympathetic, what happens is we hold right weight around the middle a lot uh, more because we are increasing our cortisol, our adrenaline, and our epinephrine. We need to metabolize that through our workouts. So that's why when Don shared about how being consistent with the four day wave and being consistent with their training is allowed to clear space in her brain. It's because she has the physiology behind that is that she's actually digest, digested the chemical cocktail of, of stress. And now that has moved through her body and now she's able to increase serotonin levels and increase dopamine and you will too. Uh, decrease alcohol intake by doing other forms of stress reduction. Um, some Folks come to us with struggling with alcohol or other forms of stress reduction that are not holistic. And generally when you're going for that quick fix, that's a big sign that your body needs some other stimulation or parasympathetic. So either your moderate intensity exercise or your meditation or a combo of both. And I wrote here, did you know that one alcoholic beverage slows your metabolism and your recovery by three days and can cause unwanted, unwanted inflammation? So if you're wanting to cut down on inflammation, Give yourself a little cleanse or maybe cut your be a little bit more modest with your alcohol consumption and that's a really easy way to feel better to get your workouts in and to decrease inf inflammation i have a bit here on the diagnostic approach to weight loss uh, you can print this out and run through this yourself i also have a youtube video which explains the diagnostic approach as well and the diagnostic approach is taking your longer term goal so let's say an individual has a 20 uh, pound weight loss goal so if a person wants to lose one pound a week, you can write it down. How many weeks would that take? One pound a week, 20 pounds, it's gonna take 20 weeks. If they lost two pounds a week, they would take them and divide that by two, 10 weeks. So the diagnostic approach is giving a window. So we first identify our long-term weight loss goal, write that number down, then create a, a window. If we were to move, if we were to lose um, 10 to 20, or sorry, one to two pounds per week, um, what would that look like? How many weeks? And those of you guys coming in, we're just going over the diagnostic approach to weight loss. We'd love if you could turn your video screen on. We love seeing guys and interacting with you if you'd like. If not, no worries. Hello. Um, so for the diagnostic approach, you want to you want to reverse engineer your long-term weight loss goal. So again, if you have a goal of 20 pounds, you can achieve that goal in either 10 to 20 weeks, depending on if you're losing one to two pounds a week. And the key to losing 10 to uh, one to two pounds a week is tracking your nutrition. So getting onto one of our membership programs where you get to attend a nutrition seminar, which code with coach Demi, you'll be learning to track your food today. We covered the one strategy of getting a palm sized portion of protein, lean protein at every meal. And then you'll also be taught how to use your fist for veggies, a fist for your smart carbs, things like your quinoa, your sweet potatoes, your brown rice would be uh, considered smart carbs. Those fuel your workouts and they help you to build lean muscle as well. So don't omit the carbs. You wanna make sure you just have smart carbs and then a fistful, a fist of veggies. So when you're looking at your plate, you know, take a look at it. Is there a palm size portion of protein? Is there a fist of veggies? Is there a, a, a palm size or a fist size of carbs depending on what your current weight loss goals are? We can go over the diagnostic approach uh, a bit more. We do screen for individuals that have struggled with body dysmorphia, body image issues, um, bulimia, any other disordered eating, uh, we really, really emphasize not looking at the scale and omitting all measurements and instead focusing on the small changes of eating more mindfully, eating slowly. These are all tips that you guys can write down too. Slowing your chewing down, adding 10 more chews, like really focusing on texture and taste and smell and all the other senses as well. Any questions on that? Any comments? Feedback? Yeah. Um, for individuals who or have struggled with chronic dieting, I would highly recommend 
reading and uh, one of my favorite resources for this, and I struggled with, um, uh, what's it called? Binge eating, binge eating for a long time. And one of my favorite resources for that is called Intuitive Eating. It's a really easy read and it's by Evelyn Tribioli and Elise Ritchie. Um, and that book has just helped me a lot. I've read it a couple of times and every time I get a little more insight about just allowing myself unconditional permission to eat whatever I want. So I had to go through a huge phase of my eating where I just ate candy and cookies all the time. And then eventually started realize, you know, started to be like, I can have that, but I don't want it. So if you have struggled with binge eating disorder or anything in regards to chronic dieting, then definitely check that out before you start focusing on weight loss again, because that in itself can cause the cyclical pattern of overeating, undereating, overeating, and, and that's how our weight starts to fluctuate and continue to become disordered. So that's my recommendation if you have struggled with that or if you see yourself falling into those patterns. Cool. And also, thank you so much for sharing. And I remember at least going through this and now she coaches and mentors young women all the time, women of all ages actually on, on this. And she has been working really closely with our ancestral health coach and nutrition um, team member, which is Dem Coach Demi, and she facilitates our nutrition seminars. Those are available for all of our, our gold members. Come to those. They're every second and fourth Wednesday at 5 p.m. There's actually one happening right now. Yeah, 5.30. 5.30. Them. Mm -hmm. And we really focus on an ancestral health-based approach so that you're learning how to eat better quality foods and getting the right amount of proteins and the right portion sizes. And um, yeah, just making small changes to improve your gut health as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so my top 10 behavioral change this is the shotgun stuff because I'm truly got to give this to Elisa so I can get onto the embodiment conference. By the way, if anyone wants to come to the embodiment conference, um, I'm going to be teaching that at 6 p.m. It's on Flow State and Steel Mace. So if you happen to want to sit in on that or just get the recording of it, um, you can go to the front page of Flow Shala. It's right there on the front page. Just scroll down, click register for embodiment. So number one behavioral change tactic, change your scheduling patterns. How do you currently schedule meetings or, and life? Do you use a Google calendar? What's your, what's your current scheduling strategy and how can you start to insert your workouts in, the, in there? And I recommend to schedule all of your workouts on Sunday. So register for the class, sync it with your Google calendar and treat your workouts as if they were an appointment with a trainer. So if you had a one personal trainer that was looking after you and you had, you're paying them 75, our coaches uh, charge about 75 to 85 an hour, and you knew you had a late cancellation, if you didn't, you know, come to that class, treat, just shift the little, the small mindset tactic of treating those classes that you booked as if you were meeting with your private personal trainer and that you're respecting your time as an appointment and you're respecting their time as well. Number two, recommit the next 30 days. You can do anything for 30 days. So write down how many days a week you wanna train, next 30 days, write it down now, pen to paper. Can you commit to meal prep on Sundays, yes or no? If no, examine the barrier that is preventing you from being able to prep your meals, prepping your veggies, getting all of your groceries, getting all of your lean proteins and everything in order, getting your green smoothie materials. Set your 30 day goal. If you have a weight loss goal and you're, uh, you, want to, you want to actually set that goal of um, you know, two, one to two pounds a week is plenty. So the max you would probably lose is eight to 10 pounds a month at the most if you're really crushing it. If you're in one of our, more of our, um, our programs that are more intensive, you can expect that. So uh, set your goal of how many, how many inches you wanna lose or what is your long-term goal. Um, and again, if you have any disordered eating or any triggers around weight, please omit that completely. And can you meditate three to four times a week to decrease your stress? Uh, number three, get your own mace. <laughs> Highly recommend investing in your own mace. Raise your hand if you have a mace. <laughs> Raise your hand nice and high. Okay. Get yourself a mace. They're 30 to 40 bucks and they're like the most, the most valuable fitness investment that you can make because there's literally a hundred exercises you can do with them and they make you feel like a warrior, which is great. Um, I have some uh, websites on it and set for set. I have some weight recommendations. Men generally start with a 10. Women tend to start with a seven or five pound. Number four, get your home workout space set up and dialed. I recommend putting a goal altar. If you're not familiar with how to make an altar, it's just like a little plant, little candle, little picture, little vision board, some trinkets that inspire you to be your highest self. 
create a little altar. Maybe it's a picture of your kids. Maybe it's a picture of uh, whatever you're wanting to manifest in the next six months. If you've never vision boarded, it's really easy. You just cut out a bunch of magazines of things that you want to manifest in your life around your goals. And when you put it there, every time you work out, your subconscious mind starts to see that whatever it is that you want to, you want to manifest. And then you start to make small actions to move towards it. Um, I also recommend if you have trouble with visually with a small screen, if you're doing virtual training, get yourself an HDMI cable and you can connect that to your, um, computer, your laptop to your, if you have a bigger screen of some, some sort, you can attach those and make it bigger. And a lot of folks do that and they found a lot of success with it. Um, a mini projector, there's mini projectors <laughs> that hook into your phone. Oh, mini phone. projectors as well. Um, number five, set an intention for your workout. Uh, journal it or share it with a friend. Pick one to two things to focus on in the workout. This increases your presence in the workout. Train your mindset. Watch your thoughts. If you are feeling like, oh, I'm not coordinated. Oh, I should be better. better. Oh, I'm not fast enough. I'm not strong enough. And you're having that negative mindset through the whole 60-minute workout. What good is that? Some thought patterns coming up decide to flip the script and say, I am working towards strength. I am strong in my body. I am working on breath. So just having a little mantra in your workouts can really go a long way. Number I'd two. say the same thing about like healthy eating, you know, like don't get down on yourself for not eating perfect. Like have a little mantra. It's the same thing. It's like, if no one's perfect, we like sweets, sugar's good. Like it's <laughs> fine. It's like perfectly fine. All that stuff is just part of the, the world that we live in. So having that same mantra of like, oh, you know, like I didn't eat enough greens today. That's okay. Like I, I want to eat some more greens. I want to eat more protein to fuel myself, to feel good. Changing your relationship yeah. with food to wanting and desiring like nutrient dense foods and foods that really fuel your body, changing that relationship yeah. to having it serve a purpose. Like I'm eating this because it's going to make me have energy. It's going to make me have less, you know, um, bloating or, or yeah. things like that. Um, I have a few more and then I'm going to hand it off to Elise. Uh, get an accountability coach. So there are 21 day reset project. You get to uh, experience a 30 minute transformation coaching session. And this is the orientation for that program. We uh, attach the manual. We'll be following up with all of you guys just to give you a little quick goal setting session and start date for you know, a couple weeks out or five two. Uh, but I recommend if you're feeling motivated, take action, take the small steps that you can to get going. Um, Let's see, add a flow fit session as a superset workout. So for our members that have been training for a while and have adapted, try adding a flow fit session as a superset on your mod and high day. So if you train in the morning, you do a hit class in the morning, add a flow fit session in the evening and try to do that two times a week and vice versa. If you train in the evening, try to add your superset, your flow, your 30 minute flow fit conditioning session in the morning, in the morning, if you train in the evening at Flow Shala. If you're not sure what FlowFit is, uh, you can always watch the recorded classes. We have a FlowFit class that happens every uh, Tuesday at 8.30. You can watch that class and that's included for all of our members as well. Uh, number eight, positive self-talk. I already talked a bit about that. Using affirming language whenever possible, both to yourself, to your colleagues, to your friends as well. Number eight, track every single workout, putting pen to paper and becoming accountable so that you can see your progress. Um, Gold Unlimited members, you get access to the True Coach app. So after you finish your trial, definitely do the Gold Unlimited. Sign up for three months. It will truly change your life. And generally, when you reach your actual physique goal, you need to be trained consistently for an additional three to four months for that to actually shift your metabolism and for that to be your new set point. So consistency is king. I can't say that enough. Make sure that you're really signed up for this uh, for the long term or signed, committed to yourself to movement for the long term. Learn the tools, own this, and we, we love it when people learn this stuff and then they can just become their own coach. That's our whole goal is we want to give you the tools that you can actually become your own coach. Um, number nine, after 30 days, reset your midterm goals three to, for three to six months out. We actually do this with you at your transformation coaching uh, sessions, um, but it's just going back to the how many days a week do you want to train? How many days a week do you want to commit to meal or to meditation? And then can we meal prep on Sunday? Keep it super simple. And lastly, number 10, play the long game. Recovery is king. I use a Whoop app. Um, this is a performance enhancing tool. I included the link on here with our uh, Whoop info. And heart rate recovery um, is the main thing that this is tracking. It, trains, it tracks my heart rate recovery, my strain, and my sleep. And it gives me a percentage of how recovered my nervous system is. 
if that's something that's like, whoa, my brain just exploded even thinking about that, that's okay. This is something for our members that have been training with us for six to eight months. If you're really wanting to take your performance to that next level, tracking your recovery, this is really valid. This really validates why the four day wave is so effective because you can see how well your nervous system has recovered to take on more strain. And tracking your sleep is really awesome too because every night it just knows when I'm sleeping and it gives me quantitatively uh, my sleep disturbances, my latency, my respiratory rate, it gives me all this data. So for data driven friends uh, that like that stuff, some brains work like that, some don't. Um, it's a really great way to step up your, your training as well. Um, I'm gonna pass it off to Elise because I have to jump into the embodiment conference. Have fun and our team will be in touch with you. Give me a thumbs up if you're feeling stoked and you wanna talk about potentially doing the 21 day reset. Just give me a little thumbs up or type it in the chat bar. Awesome, Marilyn, Denise. Yeah, Denise, let's get you going on a 21 day reset. Cool. Katie, so okay. good to see you here. I didn't get to say hi. Okay, bye guys. Have a good one. Okay, I'm going to move our operation and I have my flames on. <laughs> so you're in good hands. Um, okay, so for those of you who are members, some of this might look like review. Uh, and I'm going to flip around so we got the good lighting. <laughs> Yeah. You gave me lots of time to work with. <laughs> no, it's great. Summer is the wealth of information here at Floshala. Oh yeah, we got the good lighting. So I am going to give you guys a little intro into the back end of Floshala. Some of you already know all of this. Um, some of this will be a total refresher, but I think it's always a great thing to just learn, relearn, kind of cement the things into your brain. And then I'm also going to show you the back end of the digital nomad, which we have accidentally gifted all of you guys. So you guys get seven days of trying that out, unless you're a member and you're trying out the gold trial, then you get 30 days. Um, but if you do want to do the 21 day reset, we'll give you a whole 21 days trying that out. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the screen here. Thank you guys all for coming in and giving us all of your attention, all of your time. Okay, so is this screen share does not want to work. So from everything you guys have learned so far, who wants to share one new piece of information? Who wants to share one thing that they're really excited to get started on? Go ahead, popcorn style, you can unmute yourself. No one learned anything new? Being accountable. Mm -hmm. Being accountable, yeah. Accountability, how does that show up for, how does that show up for you? Committing to a schedule. Awesome, yeah. Committing to a schedule. So that's a great segue. I'm gonna show everyone, we got someone, thumbs up. I'm gonna show everyone um, the intro to our Kajabi first, just so that the members who wanna pop off after this can pop off. Um, and then we'll go into what the back end of Floshala, all the behavioral change that we like to talk about. So let's go ahead and get started with that guy. So you guys have all been gifted a seven day free trial of this guy right here. You mind turning that down a little summer? Okay, so this is our on demand membership. So this is included in the gold membership as well. And essentially you have access to a bunch of pre-recorded classes, um, a bunch of pre-recorded classes, all these 14 day challenges, mindset videos and a nutrition seminar with Demi. And then after 14 days of having a trial, this starts for anyone who's coming off the street. If you were to just purchase this on your own, you would get a 14 day trial and then essentially it would be a subscription. Um, but we're just giving you a seven day trial with for coming to this workshop. So if you're interested in this and you are like, what the heck, I've never seen this, check your email. You should have gotten an email that says something about Floshala Digital Nomad On Demand. Okay, so just search in your email, search in your spam. You can check this guy out, log in and, and try it out and see what it's like to take a Floshala class. Because these challenges right here, 
have our intro um, classes, our low classes, and our mod classes, and they're an hour long class. Um, so it, you get kind of get that insider look of what it's like to be at the Flow Shala. Thank you. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so for anyone. Oh, sorry. Can I ask yeah. a quick question, Elise? Um, I found the email and it says we can log in with our email and password. What is our yeah. password? So you should have gotten a follow up email that gives you a pre pre done okay. password. Otherwise, you can probably follow the link in that email and it should give you. Like I'll try the forgot perfect. password link and I'll, I'll email you guys if I can't figure it out. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So I'll share with you guys our um, insider look into the in, into the flow shala. Um, and basically in the 21 day reset, you get access to the live stream classes. So what the live stream classes are, is it's a whole spreadsheet of active classes. So all of these classes here are, you know, like 530. This class is happening right now. So if I was to click on this link, um, double click, it would open up a Zoom meeting that would bring me into the class. Mm -hmm. um, we have all of these classes in a really visual format too. So you can see the conditioning and the recovery and plan your four day wait based on this. So that's kind of the look behind the scenes of the flow shell, what's going on, how people are getting into the classes and what you would have access to in the 21 day reset. Sound good? Mm -hmm. So next up is our, I'm just trying to rush through all this because we did cover a lot of the things um, that I am going to talk about. And so I'll be able to just skim through a little bit more. Um, so our next piece of business is actually going into the manual and sharing with you that. So this is our 21 day reset trial membership program. Um, as it says here, welcome to the community and welcome just to like meeting and talking with us and getting that information that we've talked about today. So as you see, there's several steps. We recommend planning all the workouts on mind body for the week ahead, aiming for two strength classes in a row, as we talked about, followed by one recovery class whenever possible committing to daily meditation, 10 minutes per day, um, attending your accountability meeting on week two, and tracking your workouts and meeting with an accountability coach on week three. So in here, there's lots of juicy information, our fitness assessments, and you all should have gotten a copy of this. So you can print it out, you can use it, you can start tracking now. Um, if you're a member and you want to get back into the habit of tracking, you want to actually be tracking your, um, your measurements. Do this every single month to see your progress. So do this every single month and then calculate your body fat percentage um, online. And essentially when you go to the body fat percentage calculator, it will just have you plug in the numbers that you got from your measurements. And if you've never done measurements before, get a tape measure. Um, or a piece of string, wrap it around your body in these different places. The umbilical is our belly button. Uh, the waist or the hips is at the widest part. So that's right around like the crest of the butt. And you just wanna make sure that it's level um, and that it's not too tight, not too loose, and that you have a full breath out when you're, when you're taking your waist measurement or your, um, yeah, your hips measurement, make sure that your legs are square as well. Okay, so wellness is a lifestyle. As we talked about a little bit in our in the beginning section, talking about our barriers and our action steps as part of the overall picture of how am I going to create change. So identifying your personal bar barriers to exercise, to regular exercise, to eating a well balanced diet, um, to daily meditation, whatever those barriers might be, write them down, journal on your own and write down one or two new habits or action steps that you are going to implement into your life. Okay, so a lot of this will be a little bit of a review. As we step into flow, identifying your top two goals, making them as specific and measurable as possible. So a SMART goal contains a specific um, M, measurable, A, action, action driven, are uh, sorry um, relevant and T timely. I think I got the A 
a run, I'm sorry, attainable, attainable. So SMART goal is uh, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-driven. So how can your, be the mo your goal be the most SMART goal that it can be? And how will you know that you're successful in each and every one of your goals? So when you are making your, your goals for the next 21 days, and 21 days is half of a cycle, so 42 days, six weeks is a full cycle. And that's where, you know, creating change actually happens is in that full cycle. Um, so how can your specific and measurable goals be relatable to 21 days? How can you make them attainable in 21 days? And how can you make them relevant to you and where you're at in your life right now? So those ground rule practices to change your life. Once again, reiterating the daily 10 minute meditation, two, the simple journal entry, three, attending minimum of three studio workouts per week, or doing three workouts, um, including your home workouts, and then four, calculating your heart rate and tracking your workouts in your manual. And the reason that we track our heart rate, I'll get into that in a second here as our final piece, is the four-day wave. And we'll re-go re over that four-day wave and I'll show you specific examples so that you really get some clarity on that. So if I'm looking at my um, daily 10-minute meditation, if you've never practiced meditation, uh, I recommend starting with a simple four, seven, eight breath. And as you're thinking about creating a habit around meditation, think about what might trigger this meditation habit? So a trigger, um, the action and the reward. So the trigger is going to be something that you already do every single day. So say you already journal or you already you, know, you brush your teeth every single night. That can be a trigger to start you into a habit. So trigger, habit, reward. So thinking about in your mind, one trigger um, that could be a space for you to create a new habit, create 10 minutes of daily meditation. Thinking about where and when, that's also key when you're starting a habit, is making it a time, making it a place that is gonna be consistent, that you're gonna actually be able to repeat um, over and over each day, each week. Because if we tend to have random and sporadic days and times, it can be a lot harder to get that into our schedule regularly. That's why I think coming home from work, sitting in the car, that's a really good space. No one, ex unless you're on a time crunch, you um, have that space to yourself. Uh, another place is you know, right before bed or right after you brush your teeth, kind of when you're winding down. Um, or first thing in the morning is another really good one. And then our simple journal entry. So the four, five things in the journal entry, simple, easy, emotional check-in, physical check-in, three things to manifest, three things to release, and a gratitude. So emotional and physical check-in, it's just the simple uh, and easy, um, just what are the most dominant physical and emotional sensations. Three things to manifest, that's a little bit deeper into what you want to start, what you want to, how you want to feel, what you want to avoid procrastination on. And then three things to release. These are three thoughts, emotions, or relationships. Um, and relationships can be relationships to a thought or relationship to a, um, a feeling that you have. Relationship to your, you know, your sense of, you know, wanting this or wanting that as well. That can be a, a relationship in, in your life. Then we have our gratitude for what you're most grateful for today. And that practice can be a practice that really shifts your mindset into a more a positive um, thinking mindset. Not saying that negative thoughts are bad and all negative emotions are bad, but that can help you see, you know, the kind of that light at the end of the tunnel in, in your life, especially when you're going through hard times. Okay, let's reiterate that four-day flow, four-day wave, just to get a lot of clarity around that. So as Summer said, this is a concept that allows you to practice recovery-based training. Um, so that original four-day wave goes no, low, mod, high. And there's variations for the beginner, the intermediate, and the advanced mover. Um, but the benefits of this is essentially it's like training for the game day. So you're building up to your highest intensity day and you're pairing your workouts back to back so that you have more adaptation to the exercise. You um, 
create a more sustainable approach to exercise. And also you don't fall off track, just like Jackie said, you don't fall off track as easy because you can move your wave around and pair things back to back, you know, as, as you see fit rather than just, okay, Monday is leg day, Tuesday is a day off, Wednesday is, that can be very linear and make it less flexible. Um, to, to just have the, the day on day off and, and there's just less flexibility in the routine. Okay, so I'll just go over our, our uh, examples. And if you want more information on this, Summer has several, she has some YouTube videos um, and then also just read through this manual when we're done. So an example for beginners and a beginner is someone who has no current high, mod or high intensity training days um, or someone who is recovering from an injury or in pain uh, and wants less inflammation, less stress. Thank you. So some of the variations for that is our no, low, mod, mod. And so going from no, low, and then pairing a mod and a mod back to back. Um, another variation of this would be just doing no and low intensity. So going no, low, 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 and then going back down to, to no. Um, and as you see here, our no and our low intensity days, we're not doing nothing. It is an active recovery day. And the reason that we do an active recovery day with joint mobility or you know, a walk, it helps to create, um, to break down any lactic acid and also to create more fluid in the joints and you know, more lubrication in the joints um, and helps your body actively recover and rest and re repair everything also helps improve your circulation. Okay, so then you go back down no low mod and then repeat it the same in the next week. Like I said though, you can have the variation where you're, you know, you're moving around your mod days or you're moving around your low intensity days based on what your life is, you know, if you're if you're going on a vacation or you're going um, through like a hectic schedule with kids or with life or with work or anything like that, you can move things around. And then getting into the intermediate, you know, one more minute before I got to wrap it all up. So going from no, low, mod to high. Um, so we're adding in our high intensity day. And the difference between mod and high is really just the heart rate zone. So mod is 70 to 80% and the high is 80 to 85%. And then going back down to no, low, pairing in one day, and then mod high. So this is aiming for more of four workouts per week, four high intensity workouts per week um, in comparison to the beginner with just three. And of course, if you are experiencing high amounts of pain, going for more low, mobi low and mobility based training um, is going to be right on par with what's gonna help you the most get out of pain. Okay, as you move into advanced mover, six or more months of training, um, we have essentially a blueprint of five in a row. So mod, mod, high, high. All right, sounds good. And then going back down to no and low and mod. Okay, so I'm wrapping all this up because we have to get going. Summer's on a time crunch. <laughs> I'm gonna stop the share, but please, if you have any comments or anything that you are excited to get started on now that we've gone through the final section, just go ahead and give me a little feedback in your chat box. Sponsor, Anatomy, and Living 
Bye, everyone. This conference is important.